Hi, Amy. Ralph Williams here. I thought I'd just uh, give you a call and and talk about loans. I we're in this uh, market, and I think there's a lot of uh, uncertainty, maybe with different products and and terminology and in the loan world. And and you're an expert, and so I thought I'd just give you a call and we chat through some of these things. That's that sound good? That sounds great. I'm excited to talk to you, and I appreciate you thinking of me. Awesome. Hey, so let's just start with some basic, simple things that, you know, I think we think are simple because we're in the industry, but, you know, how many times does a buyer really buy or refinance a home is not that many. And so I thought I'd just kind of go over some of the basics so that we get a general understanding. So closing costs, I always hear different terminology. And sometimes I, I used to get confused. You know, what are closing costs and um, what are the different types of closing costs? Aren't there like closing costs and there's prepaids. You, can you explain further on those? And they're both considered closing costs, right? They are really. I, I mean, anything that is a, a cost to get to closing other than your down payment, I think it's lumped into closing costs. Um, but the easiest distinction in my mind between the two is that the, the prepaids are still your money. So prepaids are um, taxes and homeowners insurance and mortgage insurance, things that are set aside that are part of your payment but are used from an escrow account to make your payment. And they're, they're used to set up those accounts. The closing costs are actual invoiced fees that are paid to someone as a vendor for a service provided to facilitate the loan. Okay. So the closing costs are the fees, they are the costs, and then the prepaids are really your money. Okay, so with that being said, does the seller, like, can the seller pay prepaids? Can the seller pay closing costs? What what can the seller pay and what are some of the factors of what they can pay and why they can pay it? So the seller can pay closing costs and prepaids um, up to the third party contribution limits that are set by the loan type that the buyer's choosing. Okay. So for conventional, those... Um, Third party contribution limits are set at the down payment amounts of 3%, 5%, 10%, and then of course more than 25%. And the seller can contribute up to 3% of the sales price if the borrower is putting down 5% or less. Okay. It can contribute 6% of the sales price if the buyer is putting down at least 10%, and then 9% of the sales price if the buyer is putting down at least 25%. Wow. 9% is a lot. I know. No, it doesn't happen very often. I was going to say, I don't, I've been in this business a while. I don't know if I've seen, seen that quite happen. So, so that's kind of a, a general understanding of closing costs. That, that makes it pretty simple, right? Prepaids, just think it's your money that you already, you, you already have. You're just putting it aside in like an escrow account so that it pays those things that are coming up. And I like the fact that sellers can pay certain amounts, but it's based on down payment. 